Welcome to the Spinner Rack with your hosts, Brian and Junior. Welcome back to the Spinner Rack, issue 23. As always, I'm your host, Big B. Brian Adams, joined by... Junior, co-host of Comics Remixed. This week is going to be part one of a two-part discussion. Again. Again. But it's not just... Okay, be, be clear. It's not really... It's a two-part discussion in the term, in the way of... Same subject. Same topic. Same topic, thank you. Different format. Right. Part one is the comic book, part two is the show. What we're talking about this week, The Walking Dead. Oh, yeah. A lot of people have been asking us, or I know, I don't know about you, I know about me, they've been, when are you guys doing a Walking Dead spinner rack? When are you guys doing a Walking Dead comics remix? We've been getting, when we've been doing comics remix, the uh, Walking Dead episodes since the f- beginning of the first season, since we first started the show. I have to say, this is the one show I have been waiting to do. I know. Because every every uh, every production meeting we have, like Brian, what are we doing on Spinner Rack? You know, this week or whatever, Walking Dead. No, 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 we're gonna hold off on it. Brian, what are we doing this week? Walking Dead. No, 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 no yeah. we're gonna hold off on it. We even we even had a, a slight possibility of getting someone affiliated with an actor from The Walking Dead on with us. Yeah, we got shut down. It's all right. Shit happens. So fuck it. Here it is. We're doing it. Yep. The Walking Dead. Walking Dead. The series from Image. For those that don't know, which probably is nobody, Walking Dead is an indie comic written by Robert Kirkman and co-created by uh, Charlie Aldred and uh, what's this guy's name? Tony Moore. Tony Moore, the one that can never stay on a comic. Um, Well, actually, excuse me, it was Robert Kirkman and Tony Moore, the word I was looking for, the word I was looking for. But then after Tony Moore left on issue five or six, six, six was it? Charlie six, Alder six. jumped on, and now Charlie Alder is actually credited with being a co-creator because he's been on. Well, he's been on. I mean, it's what are we? 113 issues. Yeah. As of last week, yeah. Or I'm sorry. Well, a month or two. Yeah, it's been a while. It should be issue 114 if it hasn't hit stands by the time you're listening to this. Yeah. It should be coming soon. So, Walking Dead was published by Image Comics in 2003. Um, I'm glad you knew that because I was going to ask. It was uh, printed only, th- if I'm correct, it's one of the two numbers, either th- uh, 3,000 or, 30, or 3,500 copies. Were I know it was a really low print Very run. Very low print run. And it was an indie comic, black and white, zombies. Some people jumped on it, some people didn't. I can honestly say I picked it up at newsstand. Um, really? I wasn't sure what it is. Yeah, my buddy, <coughs> uh, shout out to Pat Powers, he, um, he <laughs> had a shop in uh, South Elgin. And it came out, and he was just like, dude, check, I went in that week. He's like, I, I worked there with him, but um, I, I, I worked. It was more of a volunteer thing. I helped him around the shop. In return, I got I earned my discount. Right on. So um, I walked Kinda in. like a work for discount thing? Pretty much. That works. You know? So I walked in there, and he's like, dude, you know, we got that Walking Dead. And I was like, what? He goes, new zombie comic. I was like, eh, zombies. And so I flipped through it, and I was like, whatever. He goes, he's like, you know. The thing he sold me, he was trying to sell me on it and what it's supposed to be and how big Robert Kirkman is supposed to be and all this other stuff. The thing that got me, the collector in me, where he goes, it was a low print run. Really? Yeah. That's why you bought it? Yeah, and I was like, uh, I'll buy one, I'll read it, and then I'll go ahead and I'll, if I like it, I'll buy another one later. Uh, I read the one and then I just didn't bother picking it up. And it sat on his racks for a little while. It didn't sit there too long. By the time the second issue came out, that's when you had people coming in, like, hey, you got number one, and it was starting to create a buzz. Uh, so I was lucky enough to get the first six issues from him. Actually, no, I had one, two, three, four, and six. And then from there, I had six all the way through 29 straight. And then that's kind of when I stopped collecting comics for a little while, so I missed out on a bunch. But I had the first Michonne in issue 19, all this stuff. But um, yeah, came out in 2003. And it was funny because I never really, I read like maybe the first two or three issues and then I stopped reading it. But I kept buying it. You know, and we all know what had happened today. You know, we're at what, 113, 14, 115 issues, wherever we're at right now. Dude, I've been hardcore since the beginning. I've read every issue, bought every issue. I mean, I've read, I've gone Um, back and read them all. I have to thank Wizard, the now non existent comic book magazine, for giving me an insight onto that. Okay. Um, It was their up and coming indie pick. Mm hmm. Walking Dead, check this out. I've always been a huge fan of the Romero zombie movies, the zombie movies in general. And the idea of a comic that dealt with, like, the premise being what happens after. Mm-hmm. I was sold, dude. And, man, what a great book, dude. 
every issue. And it was really sad. Is 2003 was the point to where I was still in a collector mindset. Mm-hmm. So I can bet all the planets came out by... Uh, Image and Top Cop. Yeah, was that Alex Ross Alex covers? Ross covers. Oh, dude, I got all those. I bought every single one of those covers, and uh, I was buying doubles of almost everything I was I got reading. all those. I got a Dynamic but, Forces covers. I got nice. the foil yeah, covers. Totally. I got, I got some that's just signed by Alex yeah, Ross. Yeah, that's awesome. I got the, the magazine that he did, and that was signed by him. But for some reason, man, I only bought one copy of Walking Dead. Same which, here. Which I regret. Same here. But we were smart enough to buy them. Yeah, oh, absolutely. It was great. This is one of the few things. We were one of the 3,000. Yeah, one of the <laughs> few things where I could be like, I was in on the ground of this shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's, it became a phenomenon in the comic book world, man. I mean, it made Robert Kirkman a, a, a star. Yeah, it did. Uh, yeah, I'm not really sure what Battle Pope, right? He did Battle Pope. Mm-hmm. I was aware of Battle Pope. Hadn't really read any Battle Pope. Still haven't. He read was any working Battle at Pope. Marvel at the time. He was doing uh, like Marvel, Marvel Team Up. <laughs> That's right. Heard. It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. Wasn't it an Ultimate Marvel Team Up too? There was one Ultimate. Okay, Marvel so team that up. wasn't him. No, doing that wasn't that? him. No. I think it was funny. A little side story for those that don't know how the the relationship is now strained between Robert Kirkman and Marvel Comics. Did you know about that? Well, I kind of figured as much since now he's like a partner at Image. Right. Well, because he was working at Marvel, and he originally wanted them to do Walking Dead. And Marvel's just like, we don't have a market for that. But they had their icon imprint was still new in their Marvel right. Max, yeah. but they didn't want to publish Walking Dead. So he took it over to Image. And he had just started Invincible. Or no, Invincible came a little after, didn't it? Yeah, I think so. Uh, but yeah, his, he introduced Invincible Marvel Team-Up, I believe, in one yeah. of the Marvel Team-Up issues. So, you know, he wanted to do that. Um, his original plan was to have Invincible at Marvel with Walking Dead. Because, you know, he was working for them. He wanted to keep it there. But Marvel was one of, you know, Marvel one of those companies where it's not creator-owned. You know, you create something, the company owns it. Unless it's under Icon. That's what Icon is. Mm-hmm. Which is so, what Kick-Ass is under, right? Yeah. And uh, Icon slash Malar World. So... He goes, well, you know, this is my idea. If you guys don't want to do this, I'm going to... You know, I'm still under contract, but you guys want to go over to Image and see if they want to do it. Image picked it up, and then they uh, they went back, and you know, he told Kirkman, told Marvel, he's like, yeah, you know, Image is going to push my stuff, and they were kind of upset about it, but they're like, all right, whatever. Once the book started to take off, and that initial buzz was coming out, Marvel's like, hey, why don't you, you know, your contract's about to expire, let's renew it, and we'll bring Walking Dead over back to Marvel, and we'll put it under the Icon image. He's like, no, you guys didn't want to do it the first time around, so right. f you. And he left, and ever since then, bad terms. It's like Marvel had their chance, and they passed on it. Well, good move for him, man. But can you imagine how how different it would have been had it been published by Icon or Marvel? You know, I kind of doubt that he would have been able to push the envelope as he has. Yeah, definitely. Because uh, fans definitely. of the TV show, I know there's a lot of crossover because of the TV show, but I also know there's a lot of people like, uh, well, like my mother and my sister, huge Walking Dead fans, TV show. Yeah. I have offered them the graphic towels and been like, you should read these, but they don't. <laughs> right. Well, see, that's the difference. My mom does. Yeah. She's watched the show, and I was like, well, she actually heard the comic first, because my sister was on the comic. Uh, you know, me being in comics, she, she knew about it, and so she bought the first two graphic novels when they first came out. And her and my mom share all, they, sh- they both share a huge love for zombies and monsters and all this stuff. So they were both hooked on it. When the show came out, my mom was just like, yes, you know, finally something. So whenever I get Walking Dead book, like graphic novels, which I don't, but I'm like, Ma, here, read this, and she'll read it right away. And she's asked me, why don't you bring them? Because I collect the individual issues. Mom. Right. You're not touching my issues. I'm sorry. You know, but I think she's actually, because I bought her a Kindle, so I think she actually went online and downloaded them all. No, cool. I got her the, uh, I, last year, I was low on cash, so for Christmas, I bought the, uh, the compendium. Right. And I bought it, and I gifted it to both of them. Like, here, you guys share this. So my mom's read the compendium, nice. the first one. She loves it, dude. It's it's a you know he, it's such an envelope pushing comic book because like so many writers are afraid to do. Mm-hmm. Robert Kirkman was not afraid to torture, maim, and at some points kill his cast. Right. And and the main character Rick, not even being the exception. Yeah. As a lot of people that may not watch have read the comics but are TV fans, at this point. Rick's only got one hand. It's been that way since what the thirties. Long time, yeah. The, the yeah. thirties somewhere. With with the governor, mm-hmm. which man, uh, I loved it. You know, like I said, I was sold on the idea immediately, and just the way he pushed the envelope on things. I mean, issue six, 
you had that whole confrontation being between Rick and uh, Shane and Shane out in the woods, and you had Carl step in and, and just blow Shane's brains out to save his dad, which it was just a, I was I wasn't expecting. It was amazing, man. Mm-hmm. And then it's just oh, man, so much great shit. The it reads better in trade, though. It, it really does, does read better in trade. It really it does. does. The, it, the, the single issues are good, it's, but they're so well, they're I, so short. What it tends to do is they they do a re- quick recap in the inside cover, and then you start to read the book, and you're like, okay, yeah, this is what's going on. And by the time you really get to the meat of it, the issue's over. Right. And you're like, what the hell? It's like cliffhanger. Because when I started rereading it, and I, when I started working here and you know, Walking Dead, everything. Yeah, massive like, spoiler you know, alerts, by the way, if we put that out already. I was like, I gotta read this. You know, I have to. So I read all the trades. And I don't remember which trade it was. I'm gonna say between six and seven, where they're leaving the jail and they kill and the governor kills Lori. Dude, when I read how it happened in the comic, I literally I finished that trade and then I stopped reading it for about a month. I was just blown away by how that happened. I was like, okay, they're running. Governor points his chick to shoot her, shoots Lori in the back. Now you don't know if the bullet went through and killed the baby or if she killed the baby when she fell because she was holding the baby and she collapsed. You know, and she smushed the baby. Yeah, yeah, they don't really give you what happened there. But the fact that I was just like, <gasps> like, wow. And then the reaction from the governor's lackey that shot her. Yeah. That's like, what the fuck? Yeah. You just had me kill a woman that was carrying a child. Yeah. Doesn't that chick kill the governor? Isn't that who takes the governor out in the comic books? I think so. After Michonne has her way with him. Yeah, because, well, that's when he does that full-on attack of the yeah. of the prison. So as she turns out. Once he... What he beats the shot of Glenn, cuts off Rick's hand, mm-hmm. brutally beats and rapes Michonne, and then the doctor and the, some chick. The doctor ends up dying. Yeah, but and it was there was the doctor. It was a chick from his camp as well. Right. She was like a, the medical aide or that something. that helps them escape. She was the one that bandaged up Rick's. Uh, Rick's and then stomach. Michonne's like, "Fuck this." She cuts off. Going she, back. She cut his eye out. She nailed his shit to the floor. Did she cut his legs off? Like all his limbs or some shit. Who? Michonne? Did she do that to the governor? I don't no. remember. I think she's. I, I know she, she nailed his shit to the floor. She nailed the shit to the floor. That was funny. I know he. She, she fucked him up good, man. Yeah. Of course, then I guess someone someone brutally rapes and beats you. When payback comes around, you're gonna do that motherfucker nasty. She should have oh, yeah. finished the job though. Yeah. But uh, man, what a what a great series. The weird, a lot of weird relationships in it. Dale and Andrea. Yeah. Which, you know, uh, unfortunately didn't get touched upon on the TV show, but I won't talk about that right now. We'll wait till we get to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, one weird thing I've noticed that I haven't really expressed to a lot of people, if you go back and read that first arc, and then you read that second arc, I think Adelard made a mistake. Because at some point, and I'm almost 100% sure, you know what, I'll go back because you're never 100%, I am 99.9% sure that I'm positive that he screwed up and started drawing Andrea how Amy looked. Who the hell's Amy? Andrea's sister. Okay. okay, that okay. Dies. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because if I'm not mistaken, in the first arc, uh, Andrea has long blonde hair, no freckles. Uh-huh. Amy, ponytail, freckles. Uh-huh. But then when Amy dies, all of a sudden Andrea freckles, ponytail. Right. So, one well, eh, you know, that's like my only nitpick about it. <laughs> that, and like you said, it is a comic book that at this point, it's v- v- it's like, you're way better off to read and trade. Or hardcover, if you can afford those. Yeah. Because the story does, I don't think so much at first, when it first came out. I think it's more of something that's happened since the TV show in the last three years. He started to write it a little differently. Where you don't get as much out of it. Man, great, great stuff, dude. The the weird asshole people that were kidnapping people and keeping them alive and eating their limbs. Oh, dude, that was crazy. The when they kidnapped Dale. Yeah. And they cut both of his legs off and he was just laying there. And that was crazy. When he started laughing at him and told him that he was fucking infected. Yeah. He's like, ah, oh, screw you guys. I'm infected. You've been eating me. That and was messed stuff. And they're like, well, we noticed there's no kids in your camp. That's what was fucked up because they all kind of looked at each other like, well, we had to survive. I was like, wow, they ate their own kids. And speaking of kids, a lot of kids in the Walking Dead comic book, as opposed to the show. Yeah. 
like uh, the twins. Man, and that was some of the most fucked up shit I've read too. Is when the one twin killed the other twin because, well, they didn't really know any better. Yeah. He's going to come back to life. Yeah. And then when everyone's asleep at night and they're trying to decide what to do with that kid, and everyone's kind of scared of him, but he's a kid and they don't want to kill him. And Carl's just like, man, screw these adults. Yeah. I'm gonna smoke this fool. <laughs> that was some. That was some heavy reading, man. Oh yeah, oh, he awesome. did. You know, and then the fact that um, Rick blew his own kids uh, face off. Oh, that's right. That was Rick that shot him. I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, because remember they were supposed to be like back to back fighting this zombie horde, and he turns around and just bam! And then once he pulls the trigger, he's like in shock. He sees what he did. He blew Rick's fu- or uh, Carl's face Carl's, off. Carl's like half of his face off. Like. <gasps> Wow, and he's he's dude, epic villains in that man. The governor was a great villain. Mm-hmm. Uh, Those cannibals were the cannibals, dude. Were some <laughs> pretty crazy villains. Yeah, he's created some decent characters that, mm-hmm. like you know, at first, like uh, Abraham. I wasn't a big fan of Abraham at first. That big white guy, yeah, with, the military with, uh, guy, uh, Fu Manchu yeah. mustache. Yeah, wasn't a big fan of that guy, but I grew to like him yeah. because he was very much like Rick, but just slightly different. They had they're a great team, and I was really sad when he got killed. Mm-hmm. Um. You, when you sit back and think about it, you're like, "Damn, 115 issues!" But then when you really look at it, it doesn't. Especially if you're reading them in trade, you get hooked in so quick that you're just flipping through them so fast. Right. You don't realize you just read 115 right. issues. You know. You just read 10 years worth of comic. Yeah, no shit. You don't realize that. What a great comic it is. I mean, and and for them to go on this long, and they, I don't know if readers even care. I know I'm curious to find out, but if you really think about it. They've never touched upon what started all this disease, what started the zombies. Yeah, no. It's been all about the survival to the point where people want to know who's going to die next, what's going to happen, where are they going. Nobody even bothers to stop and ask why or how, you know? Well, wasn't that fat guy that says he's a scientist from the CDC that was with Abraham Yeah. say that he was trying to figure out? I think he's the only person that touched on it. But he turns out he really wasn't a scientist. Yeah, he wasn't a scientist, he was just, right? He was trying bullshit. to get closer to old girl. Yeah. And he was jealous that she started sleeping with Abraham. Oh, man. How much it's got to suck to be in this movie? about the tang, man. But, uh... Man, what a great... Just a, a, a fantastic book. Right. And like I said, no fear on killing the characters in just insanely disgusting ways. In the prison, the Axel... Not Axel. Axel was the bearded guy. He was cool. That crazy guy that killed those two little girls. Oh, the one that, uh... That said he was a, uh... The accountant, the evil accountant, the yeah. tax guy, or whatever. Totally. Yeah, he he killed. Uh, what's his name? The guy, the farmer guy. What was his name? I can't remember his name. The Her- the guy with the farm and Herschel. the daughters. Herschel. Wasn't it his daughters? Yeah, it was his daughters. Yeah, like he was slicing her necks in the barber yeah. chair or whatever, and totally. he was like, "Oh, I'm just some innocent tax guy. You know, tax. I'm here for tax fraud, or whatever." That was. You got a uh, crazy ass. I forgot her name now. The one chick that fed herself to the zombies. Yes. It was the little... Sophia's mom. Sophia's mom. I can't remember her name now, but I know her That characters. chick was crazy. Uh, she was crazy. She was totally crazy. She wanted to... She got. She hooked up with... What's his face? The black dude. Yeah. Uh, t- t- uh, Tyrese. Tyrese. She hooked up with Tyrese, and then when Michonne came in and stole Tyrese from her... Yeah, in the gym, she was like... Yeah. She wanted to get into that weird... Like, uh... I want to be with both of you. Yeah, she wants to be with Rick and... And, uh... Why am I, like, forgetting names, man? Lori. Yeah. She wanted to be in that weird relationship with Rick and Lori. Yeah. And then she just feeds herself to zombies. It was so... It was weird. It was weird, man. It was weird. But I think that one of the greatest things about that book is, like, yes... Nobody's off limits. You're in this... Whole, yeah, that, too. It's, there's many great things about this book, and that is one of them. Man. Glenn in issue 100? Yes. Oh, my God. I didn't expect that. I really poor, did. Poor Glenn. You know who I'm liking, though, more than the governor is... uh Negan? Negan. Dude, he's sick fuck. He's every word that comes out, it sounds like I'm talking to you. It, almost, yeah. You know, like, what the fuck? If I, the, the latest one, did you read 113? Hell yes, dude. Where he's like, he's you like, shot Lucille. He's, he's like, like Ken, gonna, when I get you, he's like, I'm going to rip that pants off and I'm going to skull fuck you. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> if I could fuck my like bat, I would. Hell yeah, dude, that was a crazy guy. He's like, how do you know I don't rub against it or whatever? He's like, how do you know I whip my dick out and rub it against her? It's like, damn, dude, you really like that bat. Yeah. Yeah, by far, like, as much as I felt when they first introduced Negan that he was going to be a rehash of the governor, mm-hmm. he has went way beyond. Negan's craziness is out there for the world to see. He don't hide it. You had the governor, you had the cannibal people, now you have Negan. How do you top Negan? If he's already out there, like, wow, how do you top that? 
if you're Robert Kirkman? I don't think you can. Well, like, and if you go to Comics Remix at Facebook, remixed reviews in the photo album, my review of 113, I posed the question of... That was a good issue. That was one I will say that didn't feel like I was over with it in it five minutes. It was a good issue. I felt like it was over quick because I wanted more. I was like, oh my God, you know. When, I like the, the, the fight with Andrea. Oh my God, that was great when Rick thinks that Andrea dies, yeah. but she's still up in the tower. Yeah. Talk about cool. her and Rick are survivors. And that chick's a badass, man. Yeah, she's a Badass. Star. One of my favorite characters in that comic, Andrea. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't, man. I honestly, at this point, feel like that this comic does not have the potential to make 200 issues. No. I feel, as an independent comic book, he has already done an amazing feat by making 100 issues. And I mean, the merchandising, a TV show, there's video games. He, the man's done well with The Walking Dead. I think the smartest thing for Kirkman to do now is after Negan's done, is really start to figure out a way to tie things up mm-hmm. and just end it. Yeah, because you Either don't want to be or... At what point, <clears throat> like everything, you know, everything in pop culture, it's going to come to the part where people are like, oh, I'm starting to get tired of it, you know? Like you had enough. Yeah, especially with the show. The show <coughs> is successful. The show is good. You know, I'm, that's another, you know, the next part or whatever, but... At what point do people stop watching shows? Once that show starts to, to suck and people stop watching the show, then what? But the, yeah. I can see the problem. I'll save it for the next one. I'll but no, I really feel one. like that with this whole Negan thing, I mean, it's been, like, at first I was kind of like, uh, but then Negan was really over top, specifically the death of Glenn. Mm-hmm. Probably one of the most brutal scenes I've seen in comics, which... I mean, there's been some brutality in comics. That oh, yeah. shit really took it to the next level, dude. Mm-hmm. That, like, hit after hit after hit after hit. And just, like, man. The artwork, awesome, dude. How, like, every time Glenn's face just got a little more distorted and a little more distorted until he was just, just like a pile or nothing. Yeah. And poor m- pregnant Maggie, dude, watching this guy who she's been in love with for, like, 80 issues just getting killed, man. And Rick, like Rick's dominating spirit that he just won't, like even in that last issue when they're still in the shit and he's like pretty much at the point where he's going to die. Like, I'm going to fucking kill you, man. Mm -hmm. Like, if you don't kill, I'm going to kill you. I don't know how, I don't know where, I don't know when. I'm going to kill you. Man, I love that guy's determination. Especially considering he only got one hand. Yeah, no shit. And I respect the shit out of Kirkman for not jumping the shark and putting a weapon on the hand. Yeah. And getting all army of darkness about it. Yeah. Which would have been the immediate comparison that they did. Maybe that's another reason why, you know, because he's like, all right, I want to determine how badass, how much of a badass Rick is, you know. So obviously, you don't give him the weapon, the handicap, right. so to speak. Ah, I see what I did there. And, uh, you know, you don't give him the edge, basically. So since, I mean, you consider Rick to be the main protagonist of the book, right? Oh, of course. Yeah. Like, With Andre and Carl second and third. Just he's awesome. Like, he's been awesome, dude. Like the emotional roller coaster that he's been taken through, mm-hmm. and how crazy he just seemed at points where he was just going to fall apart. Man. He was getting the phone calls from the phone calls, phone calls, man. Mm-hmm. That was crazy. That shit. was that really was. And then how when they found that settlement, I don't remember what the, the name of that town is that now Rick is in control of. Mm-hmm. When they first found it, yeah. And that guy decided to let them in, and he made Rick a, a sheriff. Mm-hmm. And Rick cleaned up and shaved and had the uniform on, and how like. He seems so back to normal, but to now back to complete chaos. Yeah. If you ain't reading The Walking Dead, you need to be. You need to be. Go get your ass to a comic book shop. Hell, download it. Fucking go on. Uh, yeah, right. I'm sure it's probably on iTunes somewhere. Easily, Comicsology. Yeah, just you guys have to do yourself your favor. I mean, if you've been living under a rock, or if you've been watching it and on TV, and you've decided, you know, hey, I, I I'm not a fan of comic books. Should I read it? Yes, you should read Absolutely. the comics. Definitely. Yeah, this is not comics. Batman or Spider-Man. This is a whole new ball game. If you like the show, you will love the comic. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And if you don't want to, you're like one of those people that's like, I'm not, I don't have the money to spend $15, $20 on a graphic novel. Man, if you're local. Libraries. If you're a fan of local, have price books. Libraries, dude. Libraries yeah. carry The Walking Dead. Half, dude, I'm amazed at how many times I've went to half price books. And seen an entire collection of Walking Dead graphic novels. Mm-hmm. I don't understand why someone, man, you must really need some money to go to half price books and get two dollars a graphic novel yeah. for them to turn around and fuck. I'd have kept that shit. Yeah. It's awesome. But yes, the Walking Dead comic book, 
one of the greatest comics of the new century. The, the modern age. The modern say. age, yeah. And it's non-superhero, too. Yeah. And people think comic books, the first thing they think of is superheroes. Right. Apes and tights. Yeah. So. But that does it for part one of our Walking Dead extravaganza. Let us know what you thought at comicsremix at gmail.com or at the spinner rack at ymail.com. Any topics you want to hear us discuss on this show, hit us up at those same places. For everything Comics Remix, you go over to comicsremix.com. Gives you links to our Twitter, to our Facebook, to the uh, past issues of the Spinner Rack, to our reviews on Facebook by Brian and myself, uh, to our convention photos, just everything. You know, if you want to be on the, uh, the Spinner the Rack, let us know. The 101. Plug the 101, a new show, a new mm-hmm. segment, I should say. Hosted by oh, one Harry one is the Hammer Guy. Oh, it's a show? So 101 it's is a show, yeah. Nice. We got it, yeah. The new show, The 101. Hosted by Carrie the Cameraman. That's up every other week, opposite of uh, Comics Remix. So make sure you check that out. Very simple. Uh, I mean, the title pretty much says it all. It's a 101. How to. You know, every other week, Carrie will give you a how to and then something else. You know, how to collect comics, how to cosplay, how to do a co- proper, you know, how to go to conventions. Everything. Everything in, that's in the world of our geekdom, so to speak. Totally. You know? So. Definitely check that out. Be on the lookout for, um, well, you know what? I shouldn't even say that yet. I don't want to jump the gun, so never mind. But uh, stay tuned for up and coming greatness from the brand that is Comics Remixed. I couldn't have said that better myself. Thank you. You're welcome. So, next issue 24 The Walking Dead, we discuss the TV show. So, for another uh, issue of The Spinner Act, I'm Junior, co host of Comics Remixed, and I'm host of this interact <laughs> and i am your host with the most big b brian adams we'll see you guys next week deuces peace, peace.